In this video I'll be sharing my workflow for compositing lights from Cinema 4D to After Effects. In a lot of situations lights can make or break your scene and it's really important that you spend a little time to get them working properly. So I hope you learn something new and find these tricks helpful and with that being said let's get started. So here I am inside Cinema 4D and I've set up a very simple scene using one of my models available in Hybrid Models demo. If you want to download the models and follow along, simply follow the link in the description. So this is a very simple scene and it's just using a uh, tunnel object from the pack and I've placed this inside a cloner. Alright, and then a simple camera. I'm only using three materials for this entire scene and all materials are very basic and very simple. Uh, they all have just a color and a reflectance property and it's using a background with some Fresnel and all materials are pretty much the same and these are just very basic materials. The render itself uh, isn't anything impressive and it's going to be using just uh, the standard, I mean rather the physical renderer in Cinema 4D. So I want to focus mainly on the light compositing part on this tutorial. I'm going to be using a very basic render. So here are all of my objects from the tunnel object. And you have a lot of groups here and one of these groups will be the light. And this is the only group they're gon we are going to be working with. And the first thing I want to do is create a new material, so double click. And I'll name this material, material lights and I'll just place this on top of my lights. And for this lights material I'm not going to be using luminance or glow or anything like that. I'm simply going to create a basic material with just some slight reflectance. And let's delete the specular layer and then the Beckman layer and maybe just decrease the reflection and maybe increase the roughness and also add a Fresnel to this as well and let's decrease these as well. So a very simple basic material and maybe just decrease the brightness a bit. So let's press Shift R and create our render. So nothing so amazing so far. Now obviously this would look a lot better with proper material setup and light setup, but this tutorial will strictly be covering only the lights compositing aspect. So this will be our base render on which we composite all of our other layers on top of. So let's go ahead and save this file. I'll make a new folder here. Alright, so this will be our base. And we can step inside After Effects. And let's just create a new project here and I'll import my base. Alright, so this is the render that we've just completed. I'll place this layer inside the new composition and here we have it. Let's go back inside Cinema 4D and I'll close this. And the next step here will be to create our lights mask layer. So you can accomplish this by using an object buffer, but my preferred method is simply to right click and I'll add a compositing tag to the whole scene and I'll set the compositing tag. I can set this to color dark. All right. And if I press Control R to render this, everything will be completely black and I'll actually press Control B and I'll set this to standard. And now I will copy this tag to our lights group and the second tag for our lights will be set to white. So now as I render this, so press Ctrl R, we can see we create a very fast mask for our lights. So press Shift R and save this file and this will be my lights mask. And now I can step inside After Effects. Let's import our mask. Let's drop it in the composition. So one thing you could do here is simply set this to add and then you can add a glow to this. Alright, and you can see that the lights are already pretty cool. And this is a really fast method and it's looking pretty good, but this is not the approach that we're going to go for. So let's delete the glow here and I will actually just copy this base layer. So Control D. Uh, let's hide the lights mask layer. We don't need that for now. And for our duplicate of the base, we're going to use a set matte effect. So double click to add this effect. And for our mask, we're going to use the lights and for our channel, we're going to use luminance. And if I solo this layer, you can see now that we're using the lights mask to cut out 
only the lights portion from our base layer. And now you can see the difference here is that this layer contains a lot more color information uh, rather than the lights just being completely white. So now we, we're going to have some really nice tones to work with. And if I add a tritone effect to this for some simple color correcting, we can set this to a nice blue. And if I set this layer to add, now you can see that uh, we're starting to get some results. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, solo this again. And let's go ahead and add a glow. I'll leave this glow as it is and I'll press Ctrl D to duplicate the glow. And the second uh, layer of glow, we're just going to spread out the radius. And now if I unsolo, you can see one problem here is that we're lacking enough brightness in this row of lights below here and also on the side. And one thing we can do to fix that is if we solo the layer and I'll add the curves to this layer. And I'll go ahead and place the curves on top of all of our other effects and below our set mat. You can see now that if I drag this anchor point that controls the darkness, and just raise it up and bring in more brightness inside the layer. Uh, we can start uh, really getting the glow and the effects that we want. Uh, problem here is that this is going to also brighten uh, everything up. And we can sort of balance this out by dragging the brightness down. And we sort of have to find a sweet spot in between these points here that will uh, create the best results. So this will depend on each scene individually probably. And for the first uh, glow here, I'm actually just gonna decrease the threshold a bit and create just a little bit more contrast in our lights. And now if I unsolo this, it's looking pretty good. Maybe let's actually just uh, decrease the threshold back and this should be fine for now. Let's maybe grab this brightness point here and just drag this over just so our lights here at the top aren't as blown out. And like I said earlier, you just have to find the right balance here. And you can see these points are meeting sort of almost in the middle here and it's creating a vertical line. And like I said earlier, this will depend on each scene individually. But uh, with this approach, you get a lot more detail and a lot more depth, uh, color depth, rather than just having the light mask uh, completely white. So the next step will be to duplicate this base. And I'll name this actually just lights one. And this will be lights uh, white. And solo this layer. And I'll delete the tritone and the glow effects and reset the curves. And I want to use this layer to bring back just a little bit of white in our light. So if I leave this as it is and just unsolo the layer, you can see now that uh, we're adding a bit of uh, white in our lights and this will add even further depth to our lights colors. So maybe we can also grab this darkness point here and maybe have some white show up in our bottom row as well. You can see that with this extra white layer, our lights are looking a lot better. So for our next step, let's step back inside Cinema 4D. And I want to create a GI pass for our lights. So let's step inside our lights material and I just want the luminance channel to be turned on and this will be completely white. And uh, let's step inside our render settings, so press Ctrl B. And I'll be using physical renderer for this pass, for this uh, global illumination pass. And you can see I already have it here, so I'll just turn this on. Uh, you can add your Global Illumination Pass from the Effect tab over here. Let's go to Global Illumination Settings and I'll just use a medium amount of samples. And I also want to use Material Override for this pass, just so it generates a lot faster. And I'll create a simple material and I'll place it inside the Costume Material slot. And for our material settings, I just want a basic materials with no reflectance and just some color. We have to get rid of our compositing tags. One thing I forgot here is if I press Ctrl B, we also have to include the lights material in the exclude properties here for the material override. So this will ensure that our lights are generating GI. So let's press Ctrl R. All right, so this is starting to look pretty good. Now I'll press Shift R and I'll bring the file inside After Effects. So back inside After Effects, I can import our GI pass. 
and uh, let's place this inside the composition. So I don't want to actually use these uh, the lights themselves, only the GI that they're generating. So for this layer I'll use a set matte and I'll use our lights mask and set this to luminance. And if I solo this layer and let's turn the luminance to or rather the set matte to invert and we just cut out the lights themselves from the pass. Let's add a curves to this layer and let's just brighten everything up. Now you can see that there are some blotches here and that's from the GI. You would probably need to use a higher sample size to generate the GI, but this will work for our purposes. Let's add a tritone now. And again, I'll set the tritone to a blue. And maybe for the GI, I only want to use 50% uh, tint for our blue. And uh, let's turn this to screen and unsolo. Alright, so this is our GI pass. And this is a little bit too bright, so let's uh, step inside here and make some adjustments. Alright, so maybe something more like this, and let's unsolo this. Alright, so slide GI, maybe let's bring back some of the brightness for our GI. And let's maybe increase the blue tint. Alright, so that's looking uh, really nice. Maybe even less brightness. So all of these subtle changes will add up uh, eventually. Let's go to our base and let's just uh, increase the curves for our base as well. Just darken, uh, darken it up a bit so our lights pop out a little more. Alright, that's pretty good. Let's go back inside Cinema 4D. And I'll grab this uh, material for the lights and delete this. We don't, need, we don't uh, need this anymore. And for our Control B settings, so for our render settings, let's turn off Global Illumination. And this material here, this costume material, I want to change. So I'll go to Luminance. And for the texture, I'm going to use Effect Ambient Occlusion. And if I press Ctrl R, you can see that we are simply creating a global illumination pass. Let's actually go back inside here and for our global illumination, I'll right click this gradient and select Invert Knots. And now if I press Ctrl R, Alright, so this is looking pretty good. Let's press Shift R and I will bring this ambient occlusion pass inside After Effects. So inside After Effects, we can import our ambient occlusion pass. Let's place this inside our composition. And the first thing I want to do here is I'll grab this GI pass, so Global Illumination Pass, press Ctrl D, and I will go ahead and press Ctrl Shift and C to pre-compose this layer. And I will turn this layer invisible. And inside this composition, we can grab our GI layer. And let's get rid of Triton, we won't be digging this. And let's reset the curves here and just increase the brightness. And let's maybe Control D to duplicate the curves. And I want to also increase the contrast as well as the overall brightness. So what I want to do with this composition is I want to use this global illumination pass to mask out our ambient occlusion pass. So back in our base composition, let's go to our AO pass, so our ambient occlusion. Let's add a set matte. And for my layer, I want to use the GI composition. So let's actually step inside this composition and go to composition settings. This will be GI mask. All right, so back inside base, we can use the GI mask in our set mat and let's turn, uh, let's set this to luminance. And if I solo this layer, you can kind of see the effect that we're going for here. Let's of course add a curves and let's increase the brightness here. And let's add a tritone. All right, let's set this to blue. Uh, and let's maybe bring down our highlights. So let's Control D to duplicate the curves. I'll reset this and I'll just drag down the brightness point. All right, so we get rid of some of that really obtrusive uh, white. 
and now if I unsolo this and set this to add, so you can see how we get extra detail generated from the lights, especially around the edges. And placing this on top of our regular GI uh, really makes a difference. So if I grab these layers and turn them off, you can see that this, these extra layers are really bringing everything together. And uh, not only is it creating a more physically accurate look, but you also have a lot of control over the layers if you generate them individually like this. So for example, maybe the GI, the regular GI, you don't want this to be affecting the whole look uh, as much. So you can just turn this off or uh, maybe increase the brightness. Right, and uh, this individual control over the layers is what allows you to create some really nice light composition. Let's maybe just add an adjustment layer here and add some finer color correcting to the whole composition. So maybe just darken everything up and increase the highlights. Alright, so that's looking actually really nice. And uh, this is using just a basic uh, render, like I said earlier in the beginning of the video. Obviously, this would look a lot better with uh, actual textures and a proper light setup. But even with a base uh, render like this, you can see that the lights composited in this way really add a lot to the scene. Alright, so that's all for this video. Hope you enjoyed it and learned something new. Let me know what you think about this technique in the comments. If you're interested in the hybrid model spec, it's currently on sale on Voxside.com, so check that out. That's it for now. Thanks for watching.